question that I had before, like just about your expectations for just musketeer madness, but now that here's an actual situation where it's going to matter more um, in terms of the exhibition, what do you kind of hope to see from your guys in this uh, outing? Uh, growth uh, from the beginning um, uh, of when practice started, you know, up till now, um, or up till Saturday, I should say. The uh, the thing you want to see is daily improvement. And so that there are things that we've been working on from day one that um, you know we were able to take inventory of. Musketeer Madness, you know, there were some things that we had to correct. We had a, um, a scrimmage against Georgia last Saturday that you know, I think we got better in some areas. There's some, some areas that we have to improve. And now you sort of add the element of the lights come on. Um, decisions are a little bit more glaring to a player. Um, and so you want to see growth from last Saturday to, to this coming Saturday. And, uh, and then for our, for our coaching staff, we, we want to be able to evaluate those things and you know, figure out uh, where we feel really good about our team, some areas that we need to improve, and then uh, plan practices accordingly. Last year, you guys had a lot of firsts, a lot of attention that they dealt with, a lot of big moments. Uh, how do you think those things will help these guys this year to deal with having the attention right from the get-go this year? It'll be interesting. I think that'll be uh, a telltale sign of, of how mature this group is. You know, I, I do think that we have um, some older players, some guys that were freshmen just a few years ago that um, they're, they're used to having a business-like attitude. They come to practice every single day uh, wanting to get better. Uh, knowing where we need to get better, but I don't worry about um, the attention. Hopefully, you know, I've explained to, to our team uh, enough that all that stuff outside of, of what we do in the lines is really irrelevant. I mean, it's nice that people talk about you. It certainly helps in recruiting. I know fans get excited, but it's really about what we do in between the lines every day in practice and then ultimately what, when we get judged on game night. And I think our players understand that. A year ago, nobody was talking about you know anybody and we didn't necessarily worry about that either that we weren't getting our due or it's all earned in between the lines and I think we have experienced players that understand that. Coach I talked to Trayvon just about him losing the weight I said how much was that a part of the draft process and he said pretty much everything except the draft huh. weight. <laughs> it's nice to know I have such good influence. <laughs> he said Chris Mack had nothing to do with Duncan. Um, how, how much of his game has changed though just since he dropped weight how much different does he look out there for you? Well, he looks, uh, I think, a lot different. You know, when you're around somebody each and every day, um, it doesn't maybe feel as drastic or, or look as drastic to you, but you know, to you know, maybe media that hasn't seen him since we last played, um, you know, I think he looks a lot different. You know, there were times a year ago that Trey played at 215, 217 pounds. And the other day, he sort of joked, Coach, do I need to start putting on weight because I'm 194 pounds? And I said, no, you're good. You're good right there as long as you maintain your strength. I don't think his game has drastically changed. What's, what's changed is his ability to sustain his level of play. I think it does make him quicker. Uh, I think he has to recognize that he's a little bit quicker than he was. and uh, So I'd like to, to see him add the ability to get to the rim a little bit more maybe than, than he's had in, in years past. But if anything, it should just give Trayvon uh, an ability to sustain the level of play um, that, that he's certainly capable of playing at, which is a very high level. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, you know, what our administration has done, uh, in particular Coach Jennings and Mario, who uh, have built that thing from the ground up and everything in between, you know, all the equipment, um, they hemmed and hauled on a lot of decisions. Uh, that's not how I go about making decisions, but it worked for them and it certainly has worked for our weight room. It's, it's really impressive. It's twice the space that we had before has the latest and greatest equipment. Whatever you need to get stronger in that weight room from, you know, your ankles to your <laughs> chest to your fingernails. I mean, you can do it. There's a machine uh, for every piece of body part you have. How is Kaiser progressing with his knee? It's good. I mean, he's in the early stages. Um, you know, the, the very first few days out of surgery, you're just trying to get your flexibility and your mobility back. And as time goes on, you're allowed to do a little bit more each day when it comes to strengthening uh, muscles. Um, but he's, he's had zero setbacks since the surgery. Uh, he's experienced no pain. He hasn't gone from being able to uh, 
uh, get off crutches to now you have to go back to him. The swelling has stayed out. So I think uh, Kaiser's on a really good track. I do. And, um, I mean, he's a local guy, so you know he comes home in the summer, and you know he plays with our guys uh, when, when he can. He spent a lot of time in OKC um, over the off season, um, you know, working with uh, their people and just you know getting comfortable um, uh, in their practice gym. And I'm really, really happy for him. Yeah, he took a circuitous route after he was drafted. So I mean, how gratifying is it to see now that he's actually you know on the roster? Well, maybe circuitous, but I can tell you there are a lot of guys that that never complete the full circle, you know, and, and uh, it just shows, I think, his uh, diligence. It shows his talent level, his hunger. Um, he, he didn't just get lost overseas. And you can make an incredible living overseas, but, uh, you know, I know when he left here, he wanted to be an NBA player, and we all felt like he was an NBA player, but... Uh, I'm glad he finally got a shot. And, you know, you can, as, as you sort of look at him being on the roster now, I mean, he's on the roster, the team that drafted him, um, or at least traded for his rights. And then you have uh, a guy that didn't make the training camp for the first two years because they wanted to keep his rights. Then they ultimately cut two players with guaranteed salaries. I mean, that doesn't happen. And that just shows how strongly they feel about Samaje, and he's getting a chance to play major minutes right now uh, behind ultimately the, you know, arguably the best point guard in the country or in, in the NBA. So uh, I'm really excited for him, and um, you know this is just a start for him. Coach, I know you won't give away any secrets, but early in the season, what is your plan for the backcourt? Just kind of what that will look like for you guys. Um, well, I, I don't think it's any secret who we're going to play. I mean, we have um, you know, at least to start the season, you have Edmund, you have Malcolm, you have Trayvon, uh, JP, you have Quentin. You know, we're not a very deep team, which has made practice um, a little bit more challenging from the standpoint of a coaching staff planning it. But our players have been extremely competitive. I, I love the way our guys play well with one another. They defer if they're not open. The, the ball quickly moves. And it makes us a very difficult team to guard. You know, there's not that one guy on the team where the ball sticks. There's not that one guy on the team that can't make a play or can't make a shot. And uh, as long as we keep that, um, that feel that we have for playing with one another, we're going to be a very difficult team to defend. With uh, James and Jill and those rebounds gone, yeah. um, what are you looking for to kind of replace and fill that Yeah, we're going we're gonna to look different, but that's what college basketball is all about. You know, you lose seniors, you lose guys to the NBA, you know, unfortunately you lose guys at times to transfer. But, you know, a year ago the questions were, who's going to replace D. Davis? And I think our staff felt very comfortable that, that there was going to be a guy that was going to answer that challenge. And ultimately, Edmund did. And you know, now you're asking me about if we can keep him and whatnot. So I would tell you that I don't know if one guy in particular is going to do what James did or what Jalen was capable of. But between Tyreek Jones, the freshman, uh, Rashid Gaston, a fifth-year senior who's a monster rebounder in, in his own right and battled those two guys every single day a year ago, and then Sean O'Mara, who's in the best shape of his life. He's put a lot of the hard work into the summer. Um, those three guys at their position will be able to rebound it well enough. And then I put the rest of it on uh, the rest of our team. You know, we, we are pretty big on the perimeter. We have six foot five wings and six foot five two guards. Um, so we may not have one or two guys like we did a year ago that are averaging close to double figures in rebounding, but I think we have the opportunity to be a really good rebounding team. What kind of growth did you see out of Edmund so far in practice, and how do you see him growing this year? Yeah, I think Edmund's biggest uh, growth area needs to be decision making. You know, he, he for a freshman, a redshirt freshman a year ago, he had an awesome year, and I think he learned a whole lot. And I think the biggest jump you make in in college basketball is from your freshman year to your sophomore year. Coaches can prepare you for it, teammates can talk about it, but then you get thrown in the fire and you sort of learn on your own. You take all that into the off season, and, and it makes you better. It makes you more focused on things that you, you know really matter once practice starts, uh, what type of role your coach wants you to play. And I think that's the area that I think Edmund's gotten better. When he gets to the rim, he makes better decisions. You know, he doesn't force up shots where you're like, did, did you see the guy in the corner? He was wide open. And he's finding those guys uh, really, really well. And ultimately, that's what your point guard does. He sets the table. 
Uh, we need him to score as well. We don't want him to be disrespected. Uh, he'll shoot a better percentage from the three-point line this year than he did a year ago. Um, so teams don't just dare him. But we still want him to be fearless. We want him to get to the basket, get to the lane. And when he does that, I think you'll see a guy that makes better decisions. That's on the offensive end. On the defensive end, uh, I expect him to just be uh, a home wrecker, just a guy that just absolutely gives teams fits um, at their position. He's got the length to disrupt. When you try to make a simple point to wing entry pass, it's got to be an adventure for the other team. And uh, he has the ability to do that. You know, Gary Payton pulled him aside at one of the camps he attended this past year and said, you should be a better defender. You're six foot six. You're the quickest guy in the gym. You should be uh, a better defender. And you know, a lot of times when those NBA guys talk, our, our players have big ears. So I'm hoping that he becomes a, a lot better defender this coming year. You talked about having um, dealing with depth and how you do your practices. Do you practice shorter? Do you just practice smarter? Or how does that really work? Um, well, we took a lot of time as a staff before. Um, the season started, and let's, we're, we, we mapped out, okay, these are the two months that we're practicing or six weeks we're practicing before our first game. Um, these, are gonna, these practices right here are, are, are going to be what we deem competitive practices where guys are going to go against one another. They're going to be four on four. They're going to be uh, scholarship player versus scholarship player, starter versus starter, even though we don't know who the starters are at this point, um, and, and really make it a competitive cauldron, if you will. And these are the other practices where we're still going to go hard, but they're going to be less competitive. They're going to be more 5 on 0 They're going to be drill work. Um, we're still going to get your wind, but you're not going to leave here, and we're not going to leave here as a coaching staff uh, with any fear of having an injury that day in practice because, you know, bodies aren't going to be colliding. And that was the first part of it, the balancing act. And then the second part of it is, is doing more 4 on 4 three on three, utilizing our walk-ons, uh, having our GAs be able to step in and, and maybe simulate something uh, if we're doing a, a non-competitive drill. And that's been a challenge. You know, when you have 13 scholarships, it makes practice a heck of a lot easier. When you have 13 scholarship players, it makes games a heck of a lot harder. And you have those parents that look at you like, why is my son not playing? Like every guy on our team is going to play now. We'll see. I mean, Tim's an ankle injury away from from, you know, playing playing some minutes for us. You know, I would think that with who we have right now, uh, Tim wouldn't necessarily be one of the rotational guys, but he's in a lot more practices than he's ever been. I fully trust him to know what he's doing on the floor, but you know, there's always that transition from doing it in practice to when the lights come on, and and I don't want to put Tim in an unfair situation. So he's practiced every single day. Um, with the first and second group, which would be different for them in past years, so that if that, you know, becomes reality on game night, he'll be as prepared as he possibly can be. Chris, um, what gave you the idea to put Sean on the Insanity workout DVDs, and have you ever done that before with a player? Um, I thought you were going to say, have you ever done that personally? Because I was really proud of myself. Well, I, I know I, you've done it personally. I, I've done it. I've DVD done it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, all right. Um, no, I, to me, I don't know if you've ever done Insanity. It's, well, it's that. yeah, it's a monster. It's really difficult. And there's, I don't think there's anybody that can go through that for 60 days and feel like they're not in the best shape of their life. And so I challenge Sean. You know, he gained a, a little bit of weight during the season. Um, it's hard when you're not playing as much, maybe to keep in, in the same shape as a guy that's playing 25 to 30 minutes. But for Sean to be at his best, he has to be as athletic as he possibly can be. Nobody's ever going to mistake him for, you know, being an above the rim Jalen Reynolds type of athlete. But Sean's a better athlete than I think uh, people think or give him credit. But he has to be in really good shape. So he did everything that Coach Jennings asked and more. Uh, he and I talked about diet. He and I talked about insanity. I showed him the disc. He said, Coach, if you order it, I'll do it. Um, and so we ordered it for him, and he, you know, he went every single day and did it on his own. And I think he's uh, in as good a shape as he's ever been. He's playing like it. How much weight do you think he's lost? Uh, I, you know, I don't know. Guys will put on a couple pounds here and there, just depending on what they eat. But I, I, I guess 15, 20 pounds. And he hasn't lost any strength. In fact, he's gotten stronger on all the benchmarks that Coach Jennings has. So 
Uh, it's not necessarily weight loss. Um, it's more body composition. And Sean's in a really good place.